Welcome to Getting Sketchy Live, brought to you by the virtualinstructor.com. And now, let's get sketchy. Hello there, everyone. Matt here with the virtualinstructor.com, and welcome to Getting Sketchy Live, which, of course, is the greatest live broadcast on all of YouTube. This is where either myself or my good friend and fellow artist and art teacher, Ashley Hurst, tries to create a drawing for you inside of 45 minutes, all live here for you to watch and hopefully learn some things as well. And tonight, Ashley's going to be doing the drawing and I'm going to be manning the chat box. And that's why I look so relaxed. Um, <laughs> Ashley, how are you doing over there? I, you know, I'm pretty relaxed too tonight. So I've got a challenging subject um, for us to look at, but we're going to try to simplify it as we go. So I'll be honest, I've been looking forward to this drawing um, all week. So let's do it. And it's my understanding you're using ballpoint pens. That's right. 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 Yeah, it, I think uh, at least once a season we break out the ballpoint pen, one of the two of us. So, um, you know, it's not really an art supply, but it's a it's a mark making tool that's near and dear to all of our hearts. So it seems to make an appearance every season. Maybe uh, this will probably be this will probably be the only time we use the ballpoint pen this season since Matt is using the same materials all the way through. So if you love drawing with a ballpoint pen as much as I do, then uh, this episode is for you. Yeah, and you don't have to break a ballpoint pen out very far either because it's usually within it's reach right there. already. Right. In fact, I can look around here and I'm sure I can find a ballpoint pen. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, if you are watching this live on YouTube, there is a chat box. Of course, you can post comments and questions during tonight's broadcast. They don't have to be anything about, they don't have to be uh, what we're talking about tonight. They can be anything art related and myself mm -hmm. or Ashley do our best to answer them for you. But if you'll do us a favor and you'll put it in your comment or question in capital letters, that'll help me see it a little bit easier amongst all the other comments and questions. Chat box is already on fire. And uh, if you put your questions in capital letters or comments, that helps me see it a little bit easier. If I do miss it, it's not on purpose. It's just sometimes the chat box gets rolling pretty quickly. That's right. If you're new to the channel or if you haven't done so yet, make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss videos like this. And of course we do these live broadcasts when we're in season for getting sketchy. But I also post videos, instructional videos here on YouTube as well that aren't live, that are a little bit more polished. So if you subscribe, you'll get to know when those are published, of course. And uh, if you do like this video, make sure you like it, of course, which somebody already suggested in the chat box. Thank you for that. Um, and I uh, remind you that, that we do have a membership program over at thevirtualinstructor.com, which includes a variety of drawing and painting courses on a variety of subject matter and media, including pen and ink, um, and weekly live lessons. In fact, after tonight's broadcast, we're heading over to thevirtualinstructor.com for the beginning of a brand new series of live lessons where I'm going to be creating a still life painting with acrylics. So if you're a member, hopefully you'll join us right after this broadcast over there as we start a brand new series. Uh, those lessons are broadcast live each week and recorded and stored in our vault. There's also weekly critiques as part of the Members Minute and a year-long curriculum for visual arts teachers. There's so much to learn and explore over at thevirtualinstructor.com. If you want to learn more about our membership program, there's a link in the description below. You can check it out. Everyone starts out with a trial for free for seven days so you can go in and see if the program's right for you. If you want to just dabble a little bit and get your feet wet, check out three free course videos and ebooks. There's a link in the description below for that as well. I think you got it all in. That was pretty good. Yeah. yeah. It almost sounded like you weren't talking out of your head, like you had a script, you know. So. I know, but I don't have a script. No, it's, we, you've, done, you've done it so many times, I I've guess. I've done it so. so many times. In fact, I was kind of looking down around me at the materials uh, for the live broadcast mm -hmm. here in a second. So. All right. All uh, right. Are you ready to go? Yeah, I think so. We'll get into um, what, what our subject is and talk a little bit about our extensive materials tonight and then start drawing. Okay. And um, <laughs> I will do my best to lean over and push all the buttons, but, you know, my shoulder yeah, is that's sore. Yeah, that's right. Matt had a shoulder which, injury. He was, I, he was surfing today <laughs> in his kitchen. And uh, never a good idea. Too many hard surfaces all around. Yeah, I've, <laughs> I've discovered surfing in the last few years here. And um, I'm a very, very amateur surfer, but I love it, and I'm kind of addicted to it. And you know how you get better at stuff, like we do here right. on Getting Sketchy. We practice. You practice, so right. That's what you were doing. So my birthday was last week, and my wife gave me like a surfboard trainer kind of thing to work on your balance. And uh, I was playing around with that today, and I lost my balance. And the board slipped out, of, out from underneath my feet. It hit the dog bowl, sent dog food flying all against the wall. I went down on the hardwood floor, forehead first, <laughs> with his shoulder uh, at the same time. 
Um, and I was hurt. And mm. my 13 year old daughter waited 30 seconds after wit witnessing the whole thing and slowly turned her head around and said, are you OK? <laughs> Out no. of obligation. And that was it. Right. Right. At that point, right. she was I like, said, no, I'm not. He's okay. not getting up. No. I have to say something. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> anyway, um, let's get on with this. So let's go ahead. and. Well, I'm glad over. you're not doing the drawing because yeah. we might wear your shoulder out tonight. Well, it's my, you know, that it's is my a, left shoulder. Oh, okay. So I'd probably be okay. Just your button pushing shoulder. Right. So we'll be all right. <laughs> all right. Let's switch over and get into this one. All right. So you can see our reference right here. It's kind of small down in the corner, but uh, hopefully you can bring it up on another screen maybe to see it more clearly. There are a lot of little parts. Some of those we'll just kind of be ignoring tonight. Um, but it is a tractor. That's right. It is a, like a mid 20th century tractor. Um, my theme is down on the farm this season. So I had a, I drew a rooster last, uh, my last drawing two weeks ago. So I thought I would do something a little less organic um, this week and just try to keep mixing it up, as much variety as I can get out of my theme. So I've got a black wing pencil that I plan to make a few marks with just to sort of find our parameters, you know, the width compared to the height and maybe a few um, ellipses to start with the wheels. Um, but I'm not going to do too much drawing with the pen pencil. I want to get into the pen. Wait, that's my backup pen. I want to get into the pen um, as quickly as I can even maybe finding some of these um, some of these tractor parts with the pen. So we may have some stray marks in here. We're really going to think of this as a sketch today. So one thing, one difference in my mind between sketches and drawings is sketches are usually for a purpose. Sometimes they're like a value study or proportional study, and often they're they feel unfinished um, because they serve a specific purpose, and that purpose often isn't to become a finished work of art. So a lot of times um, I feel like I make drawings on getting sketchy. I try to complete, um, I try to finish complete compositions, but this is not, this is not that night. You know, we don't even have a composition here, really. We just have a tractor floating on a gray background. Uh, it's just, I picked gray just so, um, you know, we would have good contrast against the light and both the light and the dark parts. So we're just making a, a sketch in here, and I'm going to try to work once we find, um, once we start to find our drawing, or our, you know, our, our contours, I should say, I'm going to kind of think a little bit um, like a watercolorist at times. I'm going to work lightly um, because that's one of the great advantages that ballpoints, ballpoint pens provide over a regular drawing pen and then build up our values. So there'll be a lot of light hatching or light cross hatching in here. Um, and then, of course, there's some very dark, bold areas too. We're going to try to see those as shapes and find those relatively early as well. Of course, it's an only a 45-minute drawing, so everything we're going to do is early because it's kind of short. So... Um, with that all having been said, uh, I guess we'll go ahead and bring up the timer and start making some marks. All right. Here comes the timer, 45 minutes. All right. Here we go. All right. So I'm going to start with a big old tractor wheel on the left side. Um, these tractor wheels seem like they lean a little bit to do the perspective maybe, and I'm going to kind of, I'm going to kind of keep that going. So I've got a line here that's not perfectly straight up and down, and I'm just going to start to work an ellipse around that. So the line is like the, um, the spine, I guess, of our ellipse. It just kind of helps me compare the two sides, making sure. For me, I like to make sure the front side or the side that's closest to me just feels a tiny bit bigger than the farther side of our ellipse. All right, so that's a pretty good start for our rear tractor wheel. Of course, we can't see all of its contours. It's in shadow, but I'll go ahead and make it a whole disc right now. Okay, so uh, people from all over the world here, Sydney, Australia, Woodbridge, Virginia, London, Ontario, Canada, Bellingham, Washington, sunny Mexico, Illinois, uh, Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania, but that's an interesting place, Alberta, North Wales, UK, Norway, Minneapolis, uh, Kentucky. Uh, Bobby Ray Gilbert says, watching you guys from a maximum security prison. Love your work, man. Awesome. Also, I'm glad you can watch us from a maximum security <laughs> prison. Um, let's see here. Hello from Indonesia, from uh, Germany. Let's see Hey, this here. is a German tractor. 
is incidentally, it? right? This is a not German it is tractor. not a Ford. This is a German tractor. So um, just happened to notice that after I had selected the, you know, selected <laughs> the image. Yes, Margaret. She says, like the sled slope surfing. Yeah, I hurt myself trying to surf down a uh, snow hill. Too. <laughs> it's the same. It's the same story, uh, different week. All, same I get, story. I get hurted all the time. Apparently, hurted all the time. Hurted. All the time. Been um, let's see. Shyla asks, "What's your opinion on charcoal? Love it. You should yeah. draw with it." Yeah, that's uh, what, good. What paper is best for pen and ink? I I think personally the best paper for pen and ink uh, or one of the best surfaces is Bristol Smooth. Um, so there's Bristol paper and then with Bristol paper there's two different surfaces. There's the vellum surface and the smooth surface. I think the smooth surface is best for pen and ink. What do you think, Ashley? I think so too. Yeah, I think so. Probably. You know, it's funny you mentioned that. I was messing around with different papers today with the ballpoint pens. Yeah. You know, I like a smooth surface for a pen, pretty mm -hmm. smooth. And uh, we're we're drawing. I didn't mention it before. This is just eighty pound um, sulfite white or kind of off white drawing paper, um, and it could be smoother for me for a ballpoint pen. So Bristol board would be good. Honestly, I like using cheap computer paper with a ballpoint pen. It's so smooth I can get even lighter marks on that. And I I did consider using computer paper or printer paper tonight, and I just couldn't bring myself to do it. Yeah, now the paper for ballpoint pen drawing might be different than what's best for pen and ink. Right, I think so. The, it's just a totally different mechanism. Right, I agree with you. I think somewhat of a texture is better for ballpoint pen drawing because you can create gradations in, in tone and value with a ballpoint pen, and you can't with traditional pen and ink. What that means is you can adjust the amount of pressure that you place on a ballpoint pen to create lighter or darker values, where when you're working with a traditional ink pen, the, the line is either there or it's not. Hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's got one value. Right. Where with a graphite pencil, we can adjust the amount of pressure. Mm -hmm. Same thing's true with a ballpoint pen. You can adjust the amount of pressure and uh, less ink will actually stick to the surface. Uh, so that's unique to ballpoint pen drawing compared to traditional pen and ink drawing. All right, so just uh, what I've been doing here is, is just drawing tires, and I've been using the tires to help me with, uh, with one tire, help me with the next tire. So I was trying to find how high up on the first tire I felt like the second tire came. It was a little bit less than halfway up. And then um, similarly, I, I followed the third tire across to see where you know, horizontal line that was drawn from its bottom edge would pass through the second tire. And so I used the height of the tires to try to um, lead me from one to the next. And then also um, pay attention to the spacing between the tires. Um, I did do some measuring to see how many tires would fit between the second tire and the third tire. And so I'm going to double check that now because uh, I like to measure twice and cut once like all good carpenters. <laughs> All right, so one tire. I know you can't see what I'm doing, but I'm measuring with my pencil. Just a little bit more than one tire width will fit between the second and the third tire. So now I'll double check that. There's one tire, and then mm, I might be a little far away. I might be a little far away. So we'll just slip this tire over a little bit. I'm a big believer in redrawing um, before I erase my my lines my I guess incorrect lines sometimes uh you know they can help me if the drawing was good but it was in the wrong place then I like to refer to the old drawing to make the new drawing so that's what we did all right now we're going to use these tires to find everything else um so I'm just going to work on some outer some sort of just sort of the outer contour right now almost like um I'm just going to follow the edges of my tractor around uh, almost like a blind contour drawing. You know, I'm really doing a lot of looking at the reference right now. Just trying to follow these edges of various parts. Doesn't matter what they are right now. So I've got a wiggly little line that follows the positive space. We'll do the same thing across the top and then start breaking our big shape into little shapes and uh, with the pen. I think we'll switch to the pen for that if we're if we're pretty good with our proportions in the next uh, probably five minutes or so. Now, just for the the folks watching this, if you would have started with the body of the tractor, is that okay? I think so. Yeah. Uh, and um, I had intended to. I was going to actually start out with a box mm -hmm. that was sort of the shape of that tall, sort of like 
you know, I look at the middle of the tractor where mm-hmm. the motor goes as sort of a tall, skinny box. And I was going to start out with a box um, and didn't. So I guess uh, there's no wrong place to start. Um, some places could be better than others, I guess. Well, those wheels are kind of some good places to make comparisons. So it, it, it makes sense to start there, too. But I think you could have started at either, either location. And I think that sometimes new artists, they feel like there is a certain way that they should do things. Well, and, you start with a big oval in the middle, right? <laughs> so. And there's, there's lots of different ways to do things. There's lots of different ways to get, uh, get some accuracy in your drawing. Um, now, let's... you know, this is getting sketchy. Yeah. So at some <laughs> point, we just have to start shading. It doesn't matter if our proportions are just perfect. You know, at some right. point, we've got to pull that trigger. All right, I've got my tires in place. I can't forget about them. I want to use them to help me find the other parts. So I'm lo- I've, I need to draw the steering wheel. This is the seat. But I can't draw the steering wheel without considering the tire that's underneath it and how it relates to that. So I'm, you know, I'm holding my pencil out in front of me. I'm going to move the pencil sideways until it bumps into the steering wheel, and I'm going to see how my pencil lines up through tire number two. So this is, no, you can't see me doing this, but this is, that's what I'm doing with the reference. What so, he's doing is doing some sighting and then yeah, measuring. Pretty much in the middle, somewhere around in this area. So the steering wheel... Looks like I'm pretty good. It's going to fit in that space okay. Okay, we've got several Just questions. Just wanted to double check. Um, yeah. First question is, what is your favorite animal to draw? And that's by Riley. Hmm. Do you have a favorite animal? Um, you know, I don't do a lot of animal drawings. A lot of, The rooster was a real stretch for me. I'm not a much of a wildlife artist. But I do like drawing cats, big cats. Um, and I, Riley, like to draw birds. Yeah, you do. more than any other animal. Yeah, you do. do good, uh, you do a great job with birds. Well, thanks. Um, and uh, Shyla says you guys are amazing artists. Thanks for that, Shyla. Oh, yeah. And Dorabata says, what is a good set of drawing equipment to start with? Have any suggestions for them? Uh, equipment, like a kit? Kind of like a kit, maybe? I guess, or like, a medium? What's a good set of drawing... What, what would you recommend people who are just getting started okay. with drawing All have right. oh, that's their good. toolkit? Well, you know, I tell um, my own students when they start our drawing class that if they want to want their own, this is what I tell them if they want their own materials, you know, don't want to share. Um, I tell them to not buy a set of drawing pencils, but to buy individual pencils um, just because... I think that a lot of the pencils in the sets are almost redundant, you know, like a 3B and a 2B. I can't tell the difference. So I usually suggest skipping some pencils, like get an H, get an HB, um, get a 2B, and maybe a 4 or 5B, you know, just a few like that, and then maybe two erasers, a rubber eraser, and a kneaded eraser. And of course, you know, you can get sets that look like this with just a few pencils in there. Um, and, uh, and maybe a sketchbook that has white paper and also a sketchbook that has either gray or black paper so you can learn to work on a toned ground. And that's a good place to start. That's enough to get started for drawing, I think. What do you think, Matt? I agree. You agree with that? Yeah, um, yeah just uh, a lighter pencil, like a 2H. I think you yeah. said that. Yeah. Um, a 2B, Some a 4B is probably enough. And uh, maybe some blending stops. I think the erasers you suggested are, are nice. And um, some drawing paper. But I would also suggest maybe thinking about using some gray paper and maybe a white media. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I mentioned either a gray or a black sketchbook. Yeah. In addition. You yeah, know. so you can work on some of those lighter values. I think learning to draw on a toned paper also trains you to, to be a painter in some way, because you're not always just working from light to dark, you're working in both directions. So I think that's good, um, you know, for sort of some indirect art training, working on toned paper or dark paper is good for that. Okay, another question, what is the best brand for lesser, or I think they mean of lesser known colored pencils? Um, And I'm not really sure what the best brand of lesser known colored pencils would be. I. I think that the big brands of colored pencils that are probably the, the top quality are uh, the uh, Prismacolor Premier colored pencils, uh, the Karen Dash Luminous pencils, the Polychromos pencils by Faber-Castell. Um, mm-hmm. 
And I'm trying to think of another brand that might be considered up there. Mm. Um, I would, those, I have experience with all three of those brands and they're all very high quality. As far as lesser known colored pencils, I'm not really sure. That they're lesser uh, maybe known. that's why they're lesser we known. We can't even think of their names. <laughs> um, All right, I'm looking for some little dark shapes, you know, because I know we're going to, I can go, I can really go to town on those dark shapes with my uh, ballpoint pen. So I'm looking for a few of those now, just a few of the, um, I guess, larger details. So we've got a light. And, you know, um, we want to get things as close as we can to where they belong. And Manisha asked, how can I be, how can I have a good understanding of sighting and measuring? And we do cover the process of sighting and measuring in the course 25 Days to Better Drawings. Uh, but basically what sighting and measuring is, is you're using a tool, typically a pencil or it could be a paintbrush, maybe re really anything that you can use to make comparisons. And you hold the pencil or the tool up at your reference. Now this could be um, something that you're looking at in person that's a certain distance away from you, or it could be your photo reference pinned to a wall or a computer screen or something like that. That's kind of what I'm doing. I'm working off of an iPad screen right now. Um, and you basically just use the tool to make a measurement and you use that measurement. So you basically you slide the, your forefinger and your thumb up and down on the tool like this to find a measurement. Exactly. Like measuring the wheel. And that's the measurement from your vantage point. And then comparing it to something else. Like right. the whole width of the track. The tractor is three and a quarter of this wheels wide, if that makes sense. So that's something Ashley observed and measured with his pencil, but then he's making sure that the proportions are e equal in the drawing. So it doesn't have to be the same size. It doesn't have to be the same. So I don't have to measure this wheel and it be the exact same as my reference, just the relationship. So my re in my reference picture, which is far away, the tire may only seem this big, but as long as it's still you know, three and a quarter of this measurements wide, then it still uh, corresponds to my drawing. Or maybe maybe it's just three. Maybe That's why you got to measure twice and cut once, I guess. Okay. All uh, right. Uh, what brand or make of the tractor is this? Do you know? This you is a um, Gültner. A Gültner. So it's G-U with an umlaut over it, L-D-N-E-R. I guess a Gültner is better than Gültner. a bad one. Hmm? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Matt with the puns again. All right. We pretty much got our tractor here without a lot of the parts um, in place. So I'm just going to find a few more dark or the blacker shapes, and then we're going to jump on the pen and do a little editing as we go. Remember, um, no one's ever going to see our reference, just the results. I just remembered that um, the rooster joke from last week. You're, you're, oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, let's see, uh, Melody, well, let's see, I'm getting ahead of myself. Melody is suggesting a Tombow mono eraser as well for, I guess, part of what you would need as a beginning artist. Yeah, a Tombow yeah, mono eraser is just a very small vinyl eraser, so it allows you to erase with details. Yeah. Um, Another question, do you ever use rulers while drawing? The only time I use a ruler when I am drawing something is when I am doing something in perspective or architecturally, um, or is some type of architecture. When and, I'm drawing in linear perspective. Yeah, you know. and it's very rarely, even when I'm doing perspective or an architectural type drawing that I do use a ruler. I used a ruler when I would do the house portraits back a long time ago, obviously. Oh, yeah. And um, if I'm doing a pen and ink drawing of a, of a piece of architecture, but those are the only times that I would use a ruler. Not that you shouldn't use a ruler. I mean, it's, people think that a ruler is some type of cheating tool or something. It's it's not. Just make straight lines. But it does make your lines look like everybody else's lines with a ruler, though. That's what I was going to say. You, yeah. you lose a little bit of that uh, uniqueness and variety when you do use a ruler. It's like typing. You know, if you type your name and someone else has typed your name, types your name, nobody can tell who typed it. And so you got to find other ways when you draw with a ruler to, um, you know, I guess uh, 
create some sense of an expression. So if your expression isn't through your line, maybe it ends up being through color or something else. That's all. The tractor looks like uh, it's almost in place already. It looks really good. Well, it needs correct. to be. Yeah. It's pretty close to the proportions, and it needs to be because um, we are over a third of the way through our time limit. So I'm just going to find our grill, and then we'll uh, switch tools. Yeah, Edie is asking, when does the ballpoint pen come in? I know. Please. I keep saying, Oma, um, in any minute, any, and I just keep drawing with the pencil. Okay, we got another question here. It. Is the Loomis method best for portraits? What method do you use? And I actually, um, if I'm drawing a, a head from my imagination, then I use kind of a hybrid Loomis method along with something that an art teacher taught me a long time ago in the eighth grade is actually when I was taught this. Um, but it's kind of a combination of the Loomis method and the method that that art teacher taught me. Um, and I, I talk about that on, on the website. There is a, a page on how to draw heads um, that maybe you use. But when I'm drawing a person from observation, then I never use the Loomis method. I, I just kind of keep in mind where the where the facial features need to be, and I might check them against some of the um, more widely accepted proportions for a face. But every face and head is different, and the Loomis method is is kind of a uh, it's a a process that you can go through that's repeatable to create proportional heads, but it. It's not going to plot, uh, apply exactly for every head that you draw. So just be wary of using a formula to, to draw. Uh, but the Loomis method is a great method for creating proportional heads. What about you? You do a lot of portraits. Yeah, and I don't really um, think of it. I don't really think of using a, a method at all, you know, other than what I'm doing for this tractor. Just a lot of sight measuring. Right. So um, I'm, I fall into the camp that... Um, Almost all drawing is sort of the same, and the subject matter is, it's, it's an exercise that we go through of uh, measuring and comparing, whether it's proportion or value or color temperature. Right. It's a lot of comparing and making um, individual and unique decisions for that one subject. So same kind of questions I'm always asking myself when I'm making a drawing, whether it's of a tractor or of a head. Now, I may be wrong about this, but Andrew Loomis, I think, was an illustrator and drew a lot of heads um, from, from imagination. Okay, that totally and, makes sense. Uh, yeah, and I, I think this method is best, best used when drawing from imagination. In fact, I've seen a couple of artists um, before use the Loomis method, Loomis method and, and try to make it work for a head, and you can still see that Loomis structure. Well, that's what I would be afraid <laughs> of, is that everybody would sort of look like they're all from the same family. You know, they're a little bit related, you know, if you start using, you start depending too much on like a formula. Um, okay, here's a question. Ashley, is that the lightest black wing pencil they make? It seems pretty dark, and it is one of the no, dark ones. No, it's a dark one. Yeah. It's a dark one. I'm a dark drawer, you know. I, I'm, I don't, like I, I might have said before, um, personally, I almost don't use H pencils. And I don't, you know, remember this is a sketch. We may see some of the pencil. Um, I'm going to light my drawing a little bit. But we still may see some of the pencil in the end, and I'm okay with that. You know, I'm a, I like the, I kind of like the modern take on um, art making in that it's okay to see how an artist made their artwork as opposed to sort of the um, medieval and, or middle age and renaissance idea that you shouldn't see marks in the artwork, you know. Um, so I don't really try to cover up my marks too much, and I tell my own students because they get all been out of shape about eraser marks. Don't worry about it. You know, those eraser marks are part of your process. They actually show your thoughts on paper. And people like to see that stuff nowadays. And Howling Moon Cinema, Cinema says the chair and the wheel are a little too big, guys. They're talking about the uh, steering wheel and the chair. But they, I they, should point they out. They probably, probably are. Uh, yeah, it, it might be. But I, I really want to reiterate this. Um, there is a human drawing this, and the human <laughs> also has a timer, <laughs> and this is a live broadcast, and Ashley could sit here for 24 hours straight drawing this tractor, and it would still not be exactly no, like the photo. No, still have mistakes in it's it. It's not going to be that way. That's so right. So while, while there are imperfections, I think it's great that you see them, 
and you see differences oh, yeah. because that means that you're looking at both the reference and the drawing and you get to see the reference right next to the drawing, which we don't. Uh, so when we're drawing, we have to go back and forth just like you would. Um, but that watching this video and seeing those inconsistencies are, is actually improving your drawing without you even making marks because mm -hmm. it's, just it's helping to chance. train your brain to see what you're actually seeing. But also keep in mind, now I'm saying this mainly for your own drawings, it's never going to be a perfect representation of a photograph, and that is not what we want anyway. We don't want to copy a photograph. We exactly. already have the photograph, right? Right. So this so, is an interpretation run through the filter of our mind. So some small differences between the, the photo and the reference are, or, or the reference and the drawing is going to happen, and that's good that you're noticing it, but it shouldn't be something that we obsess over or try to continually change because we'll just be changing things constantly. Well, you know, I tell my own students that we shoot for perfection, but we're okay if we miss because we always do, but we still have to aim for it. You know, we don't want to be, um, I guess, sloppy, but uh, there is a limit right. to how right. close you can get. Right. Uh, we're obviously, when we're creating a drawing, and we're trying to represent what we see, but those mm -hmm. little imperfections are going to happen, and they should be embraced. Uh, definitely should be embraced and instead of um, obsessed over. Otherwise, you may never finish your artwork. Yeah, and, you know, if you want some good examples of this, go look at some uh, impressionistic work or some post-impressionist work, post work, like specifically Van Gogh. Uh, look at Van Gogh and look at some of the paintings or some of the objects in some of the paintings and see if they're perfect. They're, they're, there's no way they're perfect. They're now, no you way can tell exact. his aren't. Right. But even artists that do a really great job of refining their artwork, um, if we could see their references or if we could actually see the Mona Lisa, the woman, we might find that there are some differences between her and the painting, but we never see those things. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I, I say that just because a, a lot of folks get wrapped up in making things perfect. And there's probably, in fact, I know there's instructors out there that encourage you to continue to make changes until it's perfect. And you just can't do that. I encourage so. my students to make changes until we've got to move on <laughs> because we've got a lot of curriculum to cover. So anyway, um, when we get up here, now listen, there's a shadow in here and there's a thick rim on here that is not going to be part of the shadow. So our perception, our, our impression and perception of the volume of the seat could change a little bit or maybe we'll just make it a little smaller. Now, I didn't realize you were using a blue ballpoint pen. That's oh, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I like to work in color with a ballpoint pen. I think it's fun. And I actually thought about bringing a green and a red one and using black for a while and then just, just doing a little bit of green and red hatching over the black near the end. So maybe use the green for shadows and the red. Well, it's a green and red tractor, you know, oh, so yeah, I was going to shade it in gray <laughs> and then just throw little bits of green and little bits of red in places. So anyway, um, I'm not going to do that tonight, obviously, but maybe on another night, uh, we'll try to use a couple of different, uh, a couple of different colors. Oh, now, Shiloh just asked, is, is tracing considered cheating? I think you should go watch my YouTube video on that. Is tracing cheating? Is it cheating to trace? Uh, just, just check that out, and uh, you'll see a very in-depth, long-winded answer. And if you think cheating, if you think tracing is cheating currently, it might change your mind on that a little bit. Well, I think we know where Matt stands. Well, it depends on gave how you go about tracing really it, it depends on my answer to that but you need to watch that video and form your own opinion um britain says michelangelo's mistakes are visible under special lights i can see them with my own eyes <laughs> I mean, i'll go ahead and tell you um there's quite a few michelangelo artworks out there don't take this the wrong way but i would have given michelangelo a b in class just every once in a while and I'm a huge fan of Michelangelo. I copied all, as much of his drawing as I could in college. But let's be honest. He made up a lot of muscles. There are plenty of muscles he drew in the backs of his, um, of his you know, uh, subjects his, that are just not there. So do they look, I mean, they, look, they look great. It looks like the, you know, some of his, uh, his people that he drew look like the Incredible Hulk. Michelangelo would have been an excellent comic book artist because the way he would exaggerate some of those things so but uh yeah you're right you're right there's mistakes in michelangelo's drawings too he was still 
a person. I tell you what, though, I know that he, you know, fancied himself a sculptor and um, had to do a lot of painting, sometimes begrudgingly, um, but uh, boy, boy, was he a great painter, so. Okay, I think this person is asking why you drew with a duller pencil to begin with. It says, why do you draw with a poorly tempered pencil to have a softer, warmer, less precise and detailed sign? Maybe because now you draw cross hatchings with pen thinner lines? I didn't have a reason. My pencil was just a little dull. And a dull pencil is not necessarily a bad thing either. Um, a dull pencil can, can produce more character in the line. If you have a thinner or if you have a more precise point, I should say, you're going to consistently make a thinner line. Um, it's just like when you're using a thick paintbrush. Uh, that thick paintbrush actually has the ability to make more of a variety of mark compared to a skinnier, smaller. Now, you're, you got to remember who you're talking to. You know, artists have different, like, temperaments. And I'll make a painting on a piece of cardboard, okay? And that's not, it's not archival. It's going to disappear in a couple of years. And I'll still make a painting on it. So um, if the dull pencil is, a dull pencil is, is, uh, is okay. You know, it's not going to, it doesn't bother me. I'm pretty... Um, blue collar when it comes to, to art supplies. I mean, I'm drawn with a ballpoint pen, so. Okay, Dora Bada says, my cat is watching the stream with me, and she's very happy with your work so far. Okay, so, good. Uh, very good. Now, the I, cat approves. I do like to, perp I, do, I am more particular when I shade, and I do like to shade with a dull pencil, you know, um, incidentally, just because it's less work. You know, a dull pencil covers more space, so. Now, are you going to leave your graphite lines in, or are you going to erase uh, them? Yeah, I'm just going to leave them in. Just work around them. But he says, Ashley, I love the tractor. Great to see how far one can get with just with a small piece of equipment. So I guess the, uh, the pin. And the tractor. Yeah, maybe the tractor maybe is considered the tractor a small too. piece of equipment <laughs> Depending on what size equipment you're used to working with. This is a big tractor for me. My only tractor is a lawn tractor. So. Okay, the same person who posted that question about the duller pencil is saying, in my opinion, to draw with a pen, it is better to do it directly without a preliminary pencil drawing to sensitize the hand to the stroke, a bit like silver point. Now, I understand silver point, but mm -hmm. I'm wondering why you f feel like, if you could kind of rebuttal this, yeah. I'm wondering why you feel it's better to not do a preliminary drawing and have that in place. Um, because you can still make the same marks with a pen over the top of a pencil drawing, but you can do it with more confidence knowing that you have that pencil drawing in place. And I've had people, uh, one or two people in the past have, have said that they would prefer to see a pen ink drawing without any uh, graphite underdrawing. And I haven't really got a good reason why that's the case. Uh, so if you can tell me why you would make it harder for yourself to be successful, I would love to hear that answer. Because um, it's more impressive. Well, I almost drew, I thought about drawing without the pencil tonight. Um, and just, just to save time. Uh, but this is a complicated, uh, you know, a little bit of a complicated form in terms of uh, the proportion and such. So I decided to go ahead and, and use a pencil a little bit anyway. But that doesn't mean that, uh, that you should. So if you like to draw in pen with no pencil, just for, the, just for the challenge, then go for it. Most of my ballpoint pen drawings are really doodles um, during work meetings, and uh, they're done without a pencil. So. It's where I get my practice in. Yeah, but there's a lot of doodles during. Well, oh meetings, yeah, you know. a lot of doodles during <laughs> faculty meetings. All right. Um, I just keep bouncing around. I'm just going to skip around, building up values and looking for things that feel important. We were going to be putting kind of like this right here, just little patches of shading. 
and that don't necessarily uh, line up with or connect to anything. But hopefully these individual patches um, will come together to make an expression at the end, and it's hopefully the expression will say tractor. <laughs> Brenton says PLCs are the best time to draw. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what you don't do anything productive in your plc meetings uh, i remember when we first started having them i was a plc leader and oh, yeah. i was trying to make it fruitful right during the time trying but, to make it meaningful for everybody yeah but when they first started it they had you remember they had like just random teachers all together yeah yeah and it was just and everybody silly. had different like needs <laughs> and concerns so i have a plc it's called a PLT nowadays um, in my school system. Same thing, just different acronym. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just art teachers. And so we meet and don't do any of the things we're supposed to do. I don't know who's listening right now. Hopefully not my principal. And, um, and instead, we just uh, plan to make our art curriculum as strong as it can be mm -hmm. and try to stay away from all the busy work that they assign us. Okay, the person who was uh, talking about skipping the, the pencil drawing yeah. uh, said, because graphite pencil make messy, dirty, the draw, it makes the drawing dirty. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason to leave it out is to master the sensitive of stroke of direct hatching with pen. So I guess the thing we can take away from this is there's different ways to approach a drawing. And mm -hmm. I, personally, I feel like by if you're going to create a finished work of art, then you can do a graphite underdrawing and erase it without it being messy. I've done plenty of those. And um, I still feel like you can still get some sensitivity with the stroke of the pen that you're laying down. But if you want to practice with that and you feel like using graphite underneath um, hinders you from doing so, then by all means, you can definitely do that if you wish. Um, but I do feel like Probably more people will find success if they do a graphite drawing initially before turning to the pen and ink. But uh, to each their own. Again, I really don't feel like there is a way that things should be done all the time, and there's only one way. And um, I feel like there's lots of different ways to be successful, and we should always keep that in mind and not... Uh, be obtuse to the fact that other people have different processes that work for them. Yeah, otherwise, I guess our art would all look the same. Mm -hmm. And I like, I like the variety. I like to see other artists make different choices than me. Okay, another question. Thanks for all the awesome videos you post. Do you have lots of art in your homes? <laughs> um, yes. Matt yeah. has a lot more on the wall than I do. But we both have tons and tons of <laughs> art everywhere. A lot of it's just in storage. Do you still just have one painting in your living room? In my living room, I do. Yes. Now, the one painting... Don't that... tell him. <laughs> Actually, has one painting in his living room. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. Okay. Maybe one day you'll... It's, it's on the website. I'll tell you what it is. <laughs> yeah, there's one painting in my living room, and it's a painting of myself. And I sit directly underneath it every night and watch TV. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I think my wife hates it. And you look so unhappy in that picture. You don't look happy. My kids think that it it's stares a, at them all the time. It's an incredible painting. Yeah. It is thank, really, really Yeah, thank good. you. It's one of my, uh, you know, it's one of, I'm real proud of it. Um, it. I was experimenting with a new process. And <laughs> felt like I mastered it in that painting. It is fantastic. It is an unbelievable painting, especially when you see it in person. Um, but... I'm think I'm laughing because I have a portrait that I painted of myself painting a portrait and yeah. I give it away as a gag gift to people and I keep giving it away. <laughs> so if we're like doing dirty Santa or right. whatever, I'll and give that, it away. They'll unwrap it and I'll say, I got to have that back like, to give oh, to other people. No, I got the picture of Matt again this I've year. I've given it to my in-laws for Christmas one year and just watched their faces. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, I'll bet that was rich. <laughs> um, but of course it's a joke, but uh, anyway, uh, yeah, I have a lot of artwork up in my house, and I have a lot of artwork stored. I probably have, I don't know, maybe 300 pieces, I'm guessing, yeah, stored. I mean, think least. of all the, how many video tutorials you've done. Oh, yeah, there's there's over 1,000. Yeah. Um, some of those are member, Members Minute videos where I'm not creating art. but That's true. 
Margaret says, lots of great values thus far. Thanks. You know, and that's I really agree. what I'm focusing on right now is just working on the values. And I'm really focused on not paying any attention to the clock. So and, just a tip there. Don't look at the clock. <laughs> yeah, don't look at the clock. It's going to make the, you The blues are really, angry. they're, uh, they are, you know, I said this about the rooster being electric or vibrating, <laughs> but the blues are really uh, vibrating. I love drawing white, in blue, yeah. blue ballpoint pen. It's really, really cool. All right. Now I've got to get a little, just a little bit of value across the hood. Just to try to make a little bit of a highlight where the corner of the hood bends some. Uh, Dorabata has a uh, great explanation for the one painting up in your living room. Oh, okay. Oh, gosh. They say, that's really awesome. In Hebrew, we have a saying, the shoemaker walks barefoot. Ah, ha, 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 ha. I love so that. So that kind of makes sense a little yeah. bit. And, you know, I have driven by so many people's houses that, like, on, on a lawn care service. Right. And their yard looks terrible. Yeah. But they own a lawn care service. It, so I used thing. to do lawn care. <laughs> so, and I can tell you, after you, you know, I was uh, worked for like a landscape and fertilizing company years ago. Mm -hmm. And after you are on 18 lawns in a day, the last thing you want to do is come home and work in your right, yard. Right, I know, yeah. So, plump, we call, I, I have a similar expression um, that I use, you know, that a lot of people use. It's uh, uh, the plumber with the leaky faucet syndrome. You know, same kind of thing. Right. You just... So, um, question, how much artwork in your houses by other artists? I only have artwork. No, no that's not true. Cause I've, I've purchased, I have furniture by other artists. Yeah, I that have, counts. um, sculptures by other artists. I have photographs. And so there's a little bit, but definitely my artwork dominates, uh, in our house, but there is a little bit of artwork from other artists in my house. I have sculptures. I don't have enough, and what I've always wanted to do and have intended to do is um, trade as much as I can with other artists for original art. I think that's a great way to build up a collection. I knew an older artist that had done that through the course of his life, and he had the greatest art collection um, by the time I met him in his 70s. That's a really good good idea. Yeah. Because all artists, we all have unsold paintings or paintings we didn't want to sell, but over time we're more willing to part with, you know. So mm -hmm. we should take those, what I like to call keepers, and trade them around with each other. All right, any vertical surface I'm using vertical lines on, you know, just to, um, just to uh, echo the direction that that form is traveling. All right. Well, we've got a lot of space to cover, so I'm almost going to black out this wheel and then just, uh, I think this stuff in here will go really fast. Let me go ahead and just put a few dark shapes in here. Remember, our goal for tonight's artwork was to um, make a sketch that, it may, you know, we said it may be unfinished just because um, it is a sketch, so we have to have a goal, you know, know what we're trying to do with our sketch. And uh, mine was proportion and then the kind of working out some of these uh, value ranges. Now, now, here's another question for you. The reference has no cast shadow underneath it. Are right, you gonna right. Leave a cast shadow out? Or? Yeah, I think I'm just going to leave it out. You know, it's not an, like, uh, it's, to me, it's not an artwork. It's just a drawing. So there is no composition here. You know, it's something we talk about a lot. It's composition. And, uh, and up until this drawing, I've always had a composition, in my opinion. Uh, you may disagree, but I felt like I've had, um, made compositional decisions. But, you know, bringing up Michelangelo again, the great Michelangelo, when we look at his sketchbook, there's a, oftentimes just sort of disconnected half drawings spread around on, um, on a single sheet sometimes. So there doesn't, yeah, it doesn't have to be... A composition if you're really just studying in this case an object we're making a study and the timer is a suggestion of course we do have a limited right. amount of time we can't go on forever no nope. because we have another broadcast but um, the the timer if it does end and you need to do some refining of course that is still always an option
And Brent does and of course, art. Says, you I, guys can work on your art as long as you want. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. You don't have a timer. You can keep going into the next hour. But I do suggest that you occasionally draw with a timer uh, because one of the things that I think people run into, one of the issues they have is not practicing enough, not sketching enough, and they make excuses. Well, I don't have time for this, but, you know, they'll watch all their Netflix shows. <laughs> um, so if Ooh, you, That one stings, Matt. That it, one hurt. It will. If you, set your, uh, if you set yourself a timer and say, well, for the next 45 minutes I'm going to draw, there's a beginning point and an ending point, and That's you true. know how much time you've devoted to this, and you're way more likely to see it to the end. If you just sit down and start drawing and then your show comes on, ah, I'll do this later. You know, it's that kind of thing. So if you're really serious about developing your drawing skills and getting better, being an artist, then you do have to set time aside to practice. And um, that's what we're doing right here is essentially practicing. So uh, it's a good idea to draw with a timer from time to time at least. Okay, uh, here's a question. In your opinion, which books are great to learn drawing? My suggestion would be Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain mm -hmm. by Betty Edwards. That is the best drawing book I have ever been exposed to. Um, and uh, do you have a suggestion? You have a book um, gosh, there's a painting book that I love. And the name of the artist is escaping me right now. It starts with handbook, painting handbook. No, yeah. Well, they um, that is not really an instruction book. You know, that is all very technical. The artist handbook by Mark. That didn't have any pictures in it. No, no pictures. It's a book about painting. It is with a no book pictures. about materials, right? And it is the definitive book about art materials by <laughs> Professor uh, Mark Gottsagen. Um, he kind he kind of you know there there had been a. Maybe it's like a Myers or something, or like a previous artist handbook that was heavily used in the 20th century. Mm -hmm. And this is sort of the updated version of that. So he just sort of re recreated a type of a book um, that artists, that him, he himself had been using and sort of leaning on um, his whole life. And so it is great. It's called The Painter's Handbook, and it's by uh, Mark Gottsagen. Um, but the, uh, there's an oil painter who painted in like the 70s, 60s, 70s, and 80s who did an instruction book on oil painting. Its name starts with an L, and it's one of the best um, books with pictures, you know, for painting um, that, I've ever, that I've ever read. I thought of another one, too. I think so I'll, have to, the, I'll get that name. I think the name of the book is called Rapid Wiz. Uh, Rapid Wiz? I have it somewhere in here. I'm, I'm looking around for it. Maybe it's not here. Maybe it's not in here. Um, but I'm pretty sure it's called Rapid Wiz, and it's it covers a lot of uh, basic principles uh, for drawing, like basically breaking down objects into boxes and spheres and yeah. so on and connecting those pieces together. I've never it's heard all of that about one. learning how to draw quickly and efficiently. And in that book, uh, the author suggests that you draw with a felt tip. Pen. I mean, this book's from the 70s, I think. A felt tip pen. Mm -hmm, because a felt tip pen gives you such a broad variety of different marks, and it also forces you to be committal with your marks as well. So um, anyway, it's an interesting book. There's lots of nice, uh, really cool drawing exercises included in it, but it's from the 70s. It might be out of print now. I don't know. I yeah. think it's called Rapid Wheels. Probably so. all of our favorite art. Books are, are no, out drawing of print on the now. right side of the brain is not out of print. No, that one will probably that. never go out of print. You're right. Not that one. Okay, so up time is up, but we've got a few more things to do. So we're going to keep going just a couple of more minutes. Okay, it's called Rapid Viz. So that's Rapid R I, I mean, R A P I D V I Z. And it is available on Amazon in paperback. All right. Well, oh, there's a newer version of this book, it says. There's only one left in stock, so you got to hurry. It'll be but sold in a minute. It's $49.99. <laughs> the, the one that is uh, from June 9th, 1998 is $23. And if you buy it used, it's from $8.98. But uh, it's a great... Great book. It's got a picture of a hand 
on the front holding a felt tip pen. <laughs> a drawing of one. A dra- of course. Um, a drawing by the artist holding a pen. All right. So this one might end up being a 50-minute drawing. Yeah, the the blue, for whatever reason, makes a tractor look more metal. And it sounds oh, weird, that's a good maybe. Oh, point. But yeah, it just makes it look cool. Um, kind of a bright color. James, it's dark and bold. James says, I totally agree with the Betty Edwards book. It is really good. I didn't think I could draw until I did that book. That tells you Boy, about that changed that things. Yeah. That's a game changer right there. Oh, and Julie is bringing up a conversation we had uh, on the live chat last week um, on the the live broadcast for the live lessons Mm -hmm. about, did anyone find the answer to individual premier Prismacolor pencil cells? So this is something we were talking about last week that uh, one of the students uh, that's part of the membership program had heard from Dick Blick that they were no longer going to oh, be carrying right. individual Prismacolor Premier colored pencils. That's right. And actually confirmed that with Dick Blick over the phone. Now, this is all what this person And this, this is person Dick Blick not us. carrying it, right. And we're, there was never a clarification on whether or not Dick Blick was stopping the carrying of the individual Prismacolor pencils or if Prismacolor was going to stop selling them individually. As individuals, right. Um, I doubt Prismacolor will stop selling pencils individually. But I wouldn't doubt that Dick Blick might stop it, but we don't know. We There was no clarification on that. Maybe, Julie, maybe after tonight's broadcast, um, when we do the live stream over at the virtual instructor, maybe there'll be some clarification. I can't remember. Do you remember who it was that was talking No, about? I don't. I can't remember who it was, but maybe they'll be in the chat tonight. And... Uh, okay, uh, Pat says that they sent them an email but have yet to get an answer. Next step will be to call them. So other people are working on this too, cool. not just us. Well, there will be a revolt. We're not working on it. There I almost said not just us, but we're not, not working yeah, on it. We're no. just hoping. We're keeping our fingers yeah, crossed. We're, we we're just, what other right, we're just telling you guys uh, what you tell us. So, All right. Well, all right. Uh, this one's getting close to being a sketch. Okay, so Pat says, yes, open stock. My local art stores all have individual Premier pencils available and no mention of being out of stock, so that's great. I bet it's just a Dick Blick thing. They're just trying to get people to buy more of the Blick brand pencils. I know what they're doing. And Margaret tells us that Rapid Viz is authored by Kurt Hanks. It's a really cool book. It's really fun to, to, to read and look at and draw along with, and it's got some really cool 70s-type style drawings in it. Um, it's really, you know, before everything was digital. Uh, okay, we got a question. Are you going to erase the pencil, please? Do you mean, will you erase the pencil, please? There's a question sounds mark after, like a... please, so I'm not sure. <laughs> it sounds like the pencil. Are you going to erase the sounds pencil, Sounds like the please? pencil's bothering you guys. Or are you going to erase the pencil, please? Please, please erase the pencil, so. Uh, I think you're going to keep it, right? Yeah, I don't, uh, not really, that not really bother me. All right, uh, another question. What's Silver Point? Oh, Silver Point is I knew so you'd want cool. To answer that one. Yeah, Silver Point is so <laughs> cool. You're actually drawing with a little piece of silver. And so, you know, the lead holders that Matt likes to use and I like to use too, they kind of hold a, a two millimeter, maybe it's one, maybe it's one and a half wide millimeter stick of lead. Um, graphite, you know, you can get a, a little rod of silver, like an inch long rod of silver from a jeweler and slip it right up into the end of a lead holder and then draw with it. And it makes a very, li- and it makes a very light line. Um, and then also I've heard of people having drawn with, with actual lead at one time, you know, similar to silver, it's a very soft metal. And I'm assuming this is just me making this up, that we call graphite lead because people may be used to use lead and other metals to draw with. So I, um, I've looked and seen some silver point drawings, you know, from art history, and they're so delicate and beautiful. So anyway, that's what silver point is, and you don't really see it anymore. It's okay, kinda... e- Edie says, you remember the question uh, with, are you going to erase the pencil, please? Yes. Edie was just being polite. <laughs> Using the, all the polite words. 
the the please word. Yes. That's how I get my well, way too. Thank you for being polite. Yeah. Sometimes being polite just gets lost in translation, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, I th- I like that. But yeah, I think I think he's going to keep the graphite. Yeah, I'm just going to keep it all. I mean, I'm just going to keep it all. I wanted all my marks to show. You know, it's part of my sketch tonight. I wanted all my marks sketch. to show. Yeah, a true sketch. So, um, you know, gosh, I tell you what. Just like it was completed in a faculty meeting. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> this is pretty, um, you know, it's. I would like to keep working on this. Um, there's only so much of, of refinement, though, that I would be able to do. Because uh, this is the kind of drawing that I worked at a pace, you know, that was... Um, cognizant of the time limit that we had. So um, there's areas that are pretty loose and rough, and being that it's in pen, um, a, a refinement wouldn't even be possible, you know. So it's just, uh, it is what it is. It's uh, like Papa, you know, he, I am what I am, and he am a tractor tonight. So anyway. <laughs> what? <laughs> you know the Papa. Popeye slogan, I am what I am. That's all that I am. And this is just a sketch. It's not a piece of art. You know, there's no, (laughs) there's no, uh, no background. There's no ground plane. It was just a study of a tractor. It's the kind of drawing that I like to do of a subject before maybe I use that same subject in a painting, you know, just try to wrap my mind around it a little bit with, uh, you know, with just value and then take that into a, a colorful painting. So um, this is actually a little bit of my painting process. You know, I do make practice drawings of, of objects, um, and I don't want them, you know, I don't want to spend eight hours on it because I want to get to the painting, to the point, to the purpose sometimes as fast as I can. So we've got a little value study here in blue of our tractor. I'm pretty happy. I mean, I can see, you know, some proportion issues all over the thing, all over this thing. There's a little dark shape here that's supposed to be longer. Don't pay any attention to that. Um, I, the size of the steering wheel and the seat don't really bother me, though. So I got bigger issues with what's going on right here in my own mind. And we'll definitely talk about that in our last episode of the season when we critique our own art and tell you what we liked and what we might have would have done different. That's right. Yeah. Uh, and some comments real quick. Yeah. Looks amazing. Looks great. It looks great. It looks 3D. Good job. This is a great drawing. Amazing. It could be done oh, in less than an you. hour. And thanks, guys, for putting on the best live stream on YouTube. And thank you all for your comments and questions it uh oh there's more tractor on a spinach farm i guess that's a reference (laughs) to papa love it oh yeah uh is this a piece of art buddy says i i think this oh it is a piece of art oh well thanks for Uh, saying so i had to ask a cash chat at a cash (laughs) chat i couldn't stand it Uh, i couldn't stand it christine reminds everybody don't forget to like this video and don't forget to like this video that's super important that way more people will see our videos and we can just keep sharing the art Rick says, it's amazing. Thank you so much. Great job. Do you know if there's a market for ballpoint pen drawing? There, there is. There is, Edie. No, Actually, there, is. there are a lot of artists who are, uh, well, I don't know if there's a lot, but there are quite a number of artists who are now working in ballpoint pen. Most of them are doing really large life drawings. Highly detailed. Right. They look like look them up. Just do a Google search for ballpoint pen mm-hmm. drawing and then uh, your jaw is going to drop. It's And this is why I draw with the ballpoint pen so much. And actually why I chose blue because you're going to find some of the best blue ballpoint drawings um, that are like Chuck Close, Chuck Close accurate. Chuck Close before the, yeah, uh, before the accident, accident. Yeah. right? It's they're they're that big and that accurate, and uh, you need to look at some of the details, um, detail shots of some of these great ballpoint pen artists that are out there, and see how fine and faint some of their cross hatching really really is. So, I think it's kind of kind of kind of became started becoming popular on the West Coast first a couple of years ago, and it's sort of spread. And so, just another one of those West Coast things finally making its way over here to the East. All right, you're still making some scribble marks. Are you finished? Uh, I, I'm sorry. I can't. I'm, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. We're just still on air, and, I, and I've got a drawing in front of me, so I keep making marks. It but is done. We're finished. I'm putting the pencil, putting the pen down. <laughs> and All the tractor right. looks it's fantastic. Over. Um, and I love the line work in there, too. And I also like the directional strokes that you made with the line. We didn't really talk about this, but the lines are flowing along the form of the tractor. Mm-hmm. And that's also not only creating the value, 
but it's also creating the illusion of form too. So always consider the directional strokes you made on the side of the tractor where you had your finger there. If those marks were going diagonal, that the tractor would not read the way it's reading yeah. now in three-dimensional space. Somebody mentioned a few minutes ago that it looks 3D. Part of that is because of the directional stroke. So great job all around. Yeah, it's super important to keep your uh, keep in mind what direction the plane is traveling and, uh, and copy that with your pen or pencil. All right, guys, uh, thanks for sticking around for the last hour plus. If you did, I hope you enjoyed it. I definitely enjoyed watching Ashley bring this drawing to life and then reading all your comments here. Thank you guys for being a part of this from all over the world. I know for some of you, it's three o'clock in the morning. For some of you, it's six o'clock in the morning. I know this because you tell me and you stay <laughs> up and you're a part of getting sketchy here. And uh, some of you are also part of the live lessons which follow afterwards as well. So thank you for being a part of, of all of this. We definitely enjoy bringing it to you each week. Ashley, do you have anything to add uh, there? Um, I had a great time tonight, so I hope you did too if you were following along. And uh, if you don't make time drawings, I would encourage you to do so. Um, it just kind of helps you, um, in my opinion, you know, it kind of helps me prioritize what's most important in a drawing and go for that because I know I only have a certain amount of time, um, you know, to get that drawing in. So uh, try some time drawings. I like to take the same subject and try to do it in uh, two minutes, five minutes, and ten minutes. Same subject. And see how that goes. Um, not even a 45-minute drawing. That's kind of a long drawing sometimes. So cut them down even shorter and watch your skills improve fast. Awesome. Well, thanks again, guys. We're going to be heading over to the virtual instructor right now where I'm going to be starting a brand new series on painting with acrylics. We're going to be doing a very interesting still life. Yeah, it I is. can't wait to get into that. It's going to have some really interesting compositional things going on there. So for those of you who are going to follow us over there, we'll see you in just a minute. For the rest of you guys, as always, I wish you all the very best in your artistic success. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Good night, everybody.